welcome to this edition of Elm Home, uh, which concentrates, uh, following requests from the last video, on how I went about uh, building a soundscape for Elven Home um, using sound effects that I've downloaded from the BBC Sound Effects site. Uh, I also uh, pick up on my musings around High Elven and what, if anything, needs to change uh, in that part of the layout. So let's get straight on with taking a look at the BBC Sound Effects website. In this section, I'm just going to talk through the BBC Sound Effects website uh, from the things that I've discovered of it. I'm no great expert. I've obviously been on here to get the sound effects uh, that I need. I'll put a link to the website in the uh, description because it's not what you might expect. Uh, the website address is sound-effects.bbcrewind.co.uk there are some 33 or 34,000 sounds on here which cover most things. They pick up sounds from around the world, uh, as you'll see shortly. It, like any other uh, website, it has a search facility. Before I, do, I go on and do the search, uh, on the far side here is a, a section to have a look about license and usage. I do commend you to go and look at it just so you check for yourself how you may or may not use the sounds that are downloaded. Basically, if you're using them at home, my understanding of what's in there, um, well, we'll click on it and, and have a look, are that you can use this very simply at home. You don't need to buy any licenses, providing you're not broadcasting them, they're there for you to use. The good thing about it is that this license here and this description of what you can do is all in plain English. It is not legalese. Um, so it's fairly straightforward to, to understand. Um, and as I said, if you're using them at home and you're not broadcasting them, the basic thing is just use them. Um, the main thing that they're concerned about is that you don't pass them off as being, well, yours. Um, you don't use them for commercial purposes. You don't suggest there's any link with you and or the BBC. Um, but if you were using them at home, well, why would you do those things? So um, if just the search uh, bar, uh, use a search term. If we just do railway, you'll see there's 162 results have come back for railway. I'm not going to play any of these. This is being broadcast in the strict sense of the word by coming through YouTube. And I don't want to have to buy a license for something that I don't think I'm going to use a lot. Um, but you'll see if I scroll up a bit slowly, all of these ones are, are probably in the UK. Um, if we, you can click on more detail, which sometimes has uh, a bit more description on the file. The thing I did discover when I downloaded them was that there was a lot more information in the metadata that attaches to the file. Um, I'll see if I can bring one of the ones I've downloaded up uh, and show you some of the metadata that sits on the on the file. Um, if you do want to buy them or buy a license for them, with, from this drop-down menu, you can put buy sound. This takes you off to a different website, which is a company that uh, exists to sell the licenses to be able to use sounds in your if you've got a YouTube channel that's monetized. Uh, and for those of you that, that are thinking of doing that, I suggest you go off and have a look at that for yourself because I'm not going to describe the nature of that license uh, because those are more legalistic uh, and I'm not a lawyer. Um, you'll see that, that, as I said, that there are from around the world. We've got one in China, uh, Datong Railway Station Atmosphere, Germany. Um, it loads them in batches, I think, of 10, which is something I detest, I have to say. I'd much rather they loaded everything rather than keep clicking on load more. Uh, but there's 162 of them for you to go through. Some of them are from specific major railway stations. There's Liverpool Street there, Charing Cross, Euston. Uh, and then we go to Italy um, and so on. You just keep going. There's Paddington. I've no doubt there's somewhere that's got King's Cross. There are uh, from different periods as well. Um, if I go back to the top slowly so I don't send your eyes batty. 
um, and put railway 1960s. <laughs> the first effect is a toilet flushing, which is yeah, great. I think it's picked up 1960s more than railways. But there we are. There are some railway ones coming in for the 1960s because I think it was Carl Sage who um, mentioned that he would like to hear about this section and said that his website, uh, his railway, is in the 1960s and he was looking for traffic sounds in particular from the 1960s because obviously cars and lorries and things sound very different now uh, to how they did in the 1960s. Uh, so with my um, soundscape, uh, which you'll see when we come on to the section and I start to uh, creating the soundscape. I initially picked four sounds and that, that was uh, the sounds of some church bells, the sounds of some birds singing, uh, a, a, a suburban railway station because I didn't, I, plainly I haven't got a big terminus station on my um, layout so it would have been a bit odd to have someone and the sounds of, a, of one of London's major stations. Uh, and then uh, the sound of some children playing. Since the, the last video, I've added two other sounds. And as I said, I'll come back to that and uh, explain the sounds that I'm using now to create the, sound, to create the soundscape. Um, if you want to download, uh, there's this down arrow here and you can just download the tracks. Now this does have a rudimentary sound mixer on the, uh, on the website and I'll just show you that quickly. Uh, if you this sound mixer up here if you turn that on next to the sounds you will see a plus has now appeared and a black bar has appeared at the bottom to tell you how many sounds you've added to the mixer so just for uh, effect let's see what we've got here we've got the sound of some uh, railway points changing well we'll add that to the mixer and then the sound of a railway station. So we'll add that to the mixer. And now when you play the sounds, both those sounds will play together. Turn that off. Um, and you can view the mix. And here you can see the sounds have appeared. Uh, I found it very limiting as to the extent to which this can be edited at all. Um, but once you've created your mix, if you're happy with the mix, because all the sounds are pretty much the same um, volume, you can get it to record the mix as a single track and then download that track already mixed. So if you don't want to get into um, using the uh, audio software that I'm going to be showing you or something similar, um, you could create your mix here and download it all uh, with everything coming in at the start and going to the end. Now, obviously, um, you'll see if you look at this that you've got one track which is only eight seconds long. That's the points changing. And the railway station is 29 seconds long. So um, it would be possible to uh, have things coming in and out a little bit, I suppose, depending where the main part of the, of the uh, track and the noise from the track appears. But one of the things that I was particularly keen to do was to have the various sound effects coming in and out at different times. And I found I couldn't do that editing using this approach. But it would if you got tracks that were broadly similar in length. Uh, you could very well create a soundscape for yourself um, just using the BBC site and downloading it as an MP3 or WAV file. Um, which would be enough just to be able to play it. Uh, that pretty much is all I'm going to show you on here because um, you can spend hours on here. You really can because there's so many sounds that are in there uh, and things that you might uh, want to do. But this is where I've got my sound effects from that I'll now go on and show you how I created the sound file I showed you at uh, the opening section. My musings about uh, High Elven in the last video uh, really did um, un 
elicit a lot of very useful responses uh, about what might it what might be causing me to pause about doing the scenic work uh, around High Elven and particularly about the size of it as a whole and the way it just sort of sat there. Um, lots of really useful comments from a number of people um, which has really made me go back to the drawing board to some extent. Um, although I really do like the track layout that's there, uh, I'm not wedded to anything at the moment. And in order to aid me in my thinking, um, High Elven temporarily has disappeared. The board has not yet been cut back, uh, it's still complete. Uh, and I've marked on there that you can't really see it. The line, if I was to cut the board back just to take in the existing track plan, um, it would bring, uh, you won't see the whole of me here, but just to give you an idea, it would bring the line from the track around here, coming through to here and to, a, to an end point about there. So uh, I'm musing now on what, what I do. <clears throat> um, I've gone back to the original plans and the original plans did have a river flowing under the bridge and then under the viaduct into a basin um, that was a kind of going to be a dock sort of that gave access to the sea. I don't want to go back that far, uh, but uh, Chris Carter in particular was suggesting that a river, maybe the River Elven would, uh, would come onto the layout. I'm quite attracted to the idea of putting a river back in, but it would mean that all the area where the gas works is and the uh, scrapyard would need to be raised, if only a little bit, to give me some depth into which to put a river. Uh, and what I would do about putting um, to the what would be on the left bank of the river, uh, would that actually change to there being a, another bridge taking road traffic across uh, as well. So. Uh, lots to think about here before I take any steps on High Elven and certainly before I do anything about uh, cutting up the boards. Um, but I will be interested in any thoughts you have. Uh, I, I want to do something down that end and I, I'm, I like the idea also of the tracks as they come off the viaduct being visible before they d disappear under a tunnel that would take you under High Elven. Because um, I rather like the idea of, d of doing an embankment, which this railway doesn't really have any embankments, and I think that would that would be quite nice. So that this river, this railway, doesn't have any embankments, so that the river would flow under the viaduct and along at the bottom of an embankment, and then perhaps flow away uh, off the uh, off the layout, allowing me to do a bit more green work on this side of the edge of the board. Um, but as I say, that does then require me to think a bit about where the, how does the road go, where it comes off uh, at the moment and goes down and comes under one of the arches of the viaduct. That wouldn't really work in that circumstance. And I certainly don't want to be cutting into the baseboard in order to give me a few millimetres depth to put a river in. So lots to think about. Um, possibly quite radical redesign. Uh, uh, some parts down that end but uh, we'll wait and see and hopefully by the time of the next video uh, I will have completed my musings with, uh, with more of a plan but we shall wait and see. Right let's go on to the second uh, section around the creation of the soundscape. Uh, in this fairly short section I'm just going to talk through the process that you then need to go through once you've got your audio files. I had originally intended to do in within this video uh, a sort of mini tutorial, not how to use particular software, but the sorts of steps and thoughts that were in my head as I put the sound files together. When I recorded that, it makes for a quite long section. And I'm not sure if you're not interested in this subject, that it would be particularly good to put that into this video. So I've recorded a separate video which does that and in the description below there is a link to it. It's on YouTube, it's an unlisted video. One thing I would say is that if you have software for um, 
editing videos, it's almost certain that you'll be able to do the editing I'm talking about here in that software. I, I use Final Cut Pro to edit my vid videos uh, and I tried this afternoon and I was able to import files and start adjusting them and moving them around in the way that I'm going to describe briefly here. Uh, but if you want the detail on how I use Audacity, this software, to create the sound file, that's in the separate video that it, where the link is down in the description. Um, I've put Audacity up here for those who may not have software um, that's capable of manipulating audio files. Uh, it is a very powerful software and it's free. And I'll put a link to the Audacity page um, for you to go if you want to, if you need to download it because you don't have other software and you do want to do this. Uh, just to show you, if I transfer now to Audacity, what you can see here are the six audio files that I've bought from um, the BBC. Uh, and if I go to the start of, uh, and hopefully you will pick some of this up as I as I play it. Now already I've balanced this so that some sounds are not too loud uh, and every time I go back and listen to it uh, I think oh that needs a bit more balancing. Um, so it is something that you find yourself going over and over again. One thing I would say um, which I mentioned in the other video is what I, I this afternoon for the first time I listened to this through headphones and when you're editing I would wear headphones so you can hear it really clearly. Um, because that's much better for getting the balance of the relative uh, files. Essentially, the longest file of, of, of them all is the Atmosphere at Dawn. That runs at about six minutes. Um, and I decided that I wanted the tracks... Uh, on this one, it's only running for ten and a half, whereas, in fact, I could have run it for 12. I'm not sure why I cut it down to ten and a half. But So I, I, double, I, can't, I copied... This file to give me twice the twice the length, and then every all these files down here are also things which which would go through the whole life of the uh, sound file, because when this loops, obviously uh, depends how long you're running your trains, but ten minutes is long enough that if it goes back to the start, it doesn't sound too bad, rather than things that they're re repeating and repeating after three or four minutes. Uh, the only other thing I did was to with two files where I thought like, those sounds should come in and stop at some point is to have them starting a bit later in. So the children playing comes in just before one minutes and finishes just after six. The bells come in just before four minutes and run through pretty much to the end of the track. But as I said, I'm not going to go through all the steps here. How I created this, there is a separate video with the link is in the bottom. Uh, but you do need something like this, one, to be able to position the tracks where you want them to be, but also, as I have done here, to put to bias some of them to be on the left-hand side of the stereo field, some to be on the right, and that is fixed by where these things are on the layout. I've treated myself to some uh, Bluetooth wireless speakers, uh, which actually will work rather nicely with the iMac, but, but are also brilliant to stick under the layout so that the soundscape is coming and is spread along the length of the layout. Well, that just about completes uh, the edition for this week. Um, the major pieces of work that I think I'm going to be doing, apart from cudgeling my brains around High Elven, uh, is to start doing some more scenic work around the depot. I have fitted, if I zoom in a little bit, see it, you can just about make out in the centre of your screen a light. Um, this is the only light that's going to be fitted on this part of the board because this is on the raised board. Uh, but to get it in, I, I lift, was able to lift the turntable out, pick the track up, took the turntable out, uh, which allowed me to see clearly enough under to know that I could put um, that lamp in and then drill down through the baseboard and, and wire through. 
Um, it's a very, very pale light, but it casts a, a really nice white glow over the um, turntable. And I will get some more for further up the depot uh, towards the uh, coaling stage and whatever it is goes in at the, that far end. Uh, because I am quite keen to uh, to complete that. You may also notice, if I come back out again, because the picture's probably degraded, uh, that the um, engine shed that was over those two tracks coming off the turntable has disappeared and has gone forever. Um, I was never entirely happy with it. I'm much happier with them just being open um, uh, tracks really as stabling off the off the turntable um, and I have put some new bunkers at the end and put some lights the kind that you just stick in the track which does at least put a bit of light into that part of the layout and you'll also see that the mess hall following many comments about how far I was making the poor workers walk in order to, <laughs> to get their food and indeed to go to the loo uh, so that's moved closer to work to where uh, the majority of the men would be working on this yard um, the work that I want to do I think first of all if I move around a bit uh, where you can see the water tower is to complete the work around here um, that allows me to complete the uh, scenic work so that that's all finished and then start working on my way along uh, the rest of the depot and while I'm doing that I can be thinking about high oven because uh, I would quite like to get up to the end of the depot done and finished before I decide to attack any other parts that are up that top end but that I think uh, completes uh, this ed edition of oven home I hope you've enjoyed it and enjoyed to see how I did the soundscape uh, and have a go yourself um, if you've liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, well, think, please do subscribe because it'd be great to have you along. Of course, if you've got any comments, please do let me have your comments. They're always very welcome and very useful. Uh, but until I speak to you again in about a fortnight's time, that's goodbye from me. Bye bye.